Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest involvement. Mm. I'm just going to start with that, without breath. Can we all take a breath together? I'm proud of you. I am proud of you for making it to today, for being so aligned with the light. The fact that despite everything happening in the world right now, you are choosing to listen to this episode. I thank you. I'm proud of you. And together we are going to raise the vibration of the planet. So if it's your first time listening, what up? My name is Sahara Rose. If you're here all the time, I love you. Even if you're not, I love you. Because right now what we need is more love. What we need is more unity. What we need is to get out of this matrix of duality. And I'm talking all levels. This lie that we are separate is rampant. And it is causing so many well-intentioned people to cut themselves off from their life force, from their energy, because they're so focused in playing this tennis match, right? Like when you're playing tennis and it's like the moment you hit the ball, it's coming right back into your court and it's coming right back into your court. So you're just on this constant defense. Like you can't like hang out and take a walk while you're playing tennis. You're like, go, 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 go. Who's next? TikTok reference, if any of you are on there, but you're just hitting it. So this is how energetically a lot of us have felt. I know myself until I set an intention to make July, July, because June was certainly not June. (laughs) June was a difficult month for all of us, a difficult month for the planet. And I wanted to tap back into my own truth so I could actually be of service in the highest way. And that is what today's episode is about. So I realized myself as a self-proclaimed activist, for those of you who don't know me yet, my background was being an activist. I, from the time I was a kid, was staging protests and I founded the Amnesty International chapter in my region and I went to school to be an international human rights lawyer. I studied international development in DC. I worked at different immigrants and refugee associations. I studied globalization. I was in a global program from the time that I was in ninth grade, like This is a huge part of my dharma and a huge part of my passion. And with the spiritual awakening that I underwent in my early 20s and up till where I am now, almost 30 years old, I realized that activism is not what we think. It is not what they make us believe. It is not repeating the same things that we don't want. And If you're listening to this, you want the world to be a better place. We all do, but we need to think in a different way than we ever have before to actually co-create that. So in my last solo cast that I did two weeks ago, I speak about more of this, what we can actually do and how right now we're, we're so focusing on the, our energy on like, what's that next? Okay. We need to do X, Y, Z, this, this arrest, this, 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 that. And the thing is, the people in power are not really listening. They're, I mean, the fact that the killers of Breonna Taylor are still not arrested, despite there being over 10 million signatures on that petition, so many protests, the fact that they're still not arrested shows that this system, it's not going to go down easily. <laughs> and we need to also know what do we want to come instead of it? Because it's really easy to destroy a building and it's not so easy to create a new one. And we have different people on different spectrums. We have those who are on the front lines, those who are the healers, those who are working with the food system, the children, and so many so many ways of being. And I think that we all, when everything began to unfold, we all jumped to the front lines because we care, because we care and we want to be of service. So we kind of looked at the next person and said, how are they being of service? Okay, this must be what being of service looks like to do as they are doing, not realizing that what they are doing is in alignment perhaps with their dharma, if they're even in alignment with their dharma, but it's not in alignment with your dharma and your dharma is your soul's purpose. It's your, your big reason, your vibration, the essence that only you can carry on this planet. So one person's dharma may be to bring beauty to the world. 
well, maybe they need to be creating the artwork or creating beautiful, like artistic demonstrations. I shared the one that I went on organized by uh, Shelly Bruce, all about healing. It was called a day of healing. And she had poets and rappers and African drummers. And we did a ceremony for the goddess Yamaya and bringing her dharma as an artist to the front line. And everyone has their different way to be of purpose, but we're not going to be able to know that until we get quiet with ourselves. And when we just continue that jump, that jump, that jump, that who's next, who's next, who's next, what's next, what's next, we're living our lives in a ping pong match and we're not actually making change. We're posting on social media, but who's reading that social media post? Other people who just share. And then where is the change happening? Who is the person that's actually going out there and doing something? So because we often feel so helpless, then we decide we're not going to do anything at all. And it's not not doing anything at all as much as it's not blindly doing something. It's about finding how you uniquely can be of service. So in this episode, this is actually an Instagram live that I did last week on the Chopra Instagram. Chopra is Deepak Chopra's Instagram and his company. They have so many incredible retreats. We were going to be doing one together this year, but unfortunately got postponed because of everything, but we've rescheduled it for next year. And uh, Deepak has been an incredible mentor to me and has written the foreword of three of my books. And I highly recommend his work, his books, his his way of seeing the world for everyone to dive into it and learn more from him. And I was so honored to be able to teach this with his community, but how your vibration is actually the basis of your activism and how us shouting and us just being as angry as possible while that anger is is just and that anger makes sense, it's not actually what is going to create this new way forward. It is a natural byproduct of feeling unheard. You know, it is a natural response to injustice. And now that we know what we're dealing with here, now that we see this is a lot bigger than one subject, this is like we're at the little pinky toe of the elephant, okay? We haven't even fully seen in mainstream media all of the shit that's going under the surface. And it's a lot and it's interconnected. So we need to be level-headed. We need to be balanced and we need to be in our hearts. We can't be ripping each other to shreds. We can't be focusing on these dualistic subject matters, these semantics that I see so many people spending all of their time focusing on when there are some real big issues that we could all agree that are wrong happening that If we're living in this dualistic fighting world, we're actually never going to even be able to open up our consciousness enough to understand it. So this talk was really about anchoring into your vibration, anchoring into your truth, anchoring into your heart, and then take action from there, but know that action to be from a place of complete alignment. I also share something that is part of my next book, Discover Your Dharma, of how the three doshas in relation to to service can be. So the vata, pitta, and kapha way to be of service. If you aren't familiar with the three doshas, I got you. Head over to my website, IamSaharaRose.com. The link is in the show notes. I have a quiz right there. I just re-updated the quiz too. So if you've taken it a while ago, I've re-updated it. So you take the quiz. It's going to take you like two minutes and it's going to give you a breakdown of percentages of each of these doshas, which are the Ayurvedic archetypes or energy types based off of the five elements. So it's going to break down the percentages of each dosha in your mind and in your body and give you this like complete understanding of where your is at at this time. And of course, I've read in books on it, Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda, which is a great textbook, 400 plus page textbook on Ayurveda, Eat Feel Fresh, which is my modernized plant-based nutrition approach to Ayurveda and my yogic path deck. So we dive into the three doshas and their relationship with service in this conversation. So if you love Ayurveda, this is going to be a really interesting new way for you to look at the doshas. And of course, so much more of that in my upcoming book, Discover Your Dharma, which is also now available for pre-order on Amazon. So know that you being in a place of alignment and you being in a place of truth is really what is going to create the ripple effect that you are seeking in the world. And even though there are times that you feel helpless, just know that you living in complete integrity is the highest form of activism that you can do. So without further ado, let us welcome me (laughs) to the High Self Podcast. And before we get started, I'd love to share with you this special offer. 
Are you that person that all your friends and family members come to when they need wellness advice? Are you constantly looking up new ways to heal and balance your mind, body, and spirit, including listening to this podcast? Well, have you ever considered having a career becoming a holistic health coach where you get to decide your own hours, work with people, tackling the subjects that you are the most passionate about, and having financial freedom along the way? Well, I am so excited to be teaming up with my very own Alma Matter Institute for Integrative Nutrition to offer their biggest discount yet. You'll receive $2,250 off tuition, an extra bonus that they're offering just with my High Self podcast listeners on how to launch your dream book. This course is going to get you super clear on what your book is about and how to bring it out into the world. I've created a webinar for you on how to have a thriving business as a health coach. So using social media, creating passive income, how to have a wait list of clients and become the best known coach in your niche with raving testimonials. Tickets to a live upcoming IIN conference where I will be meeting you over there. Super excited to connect and a bundle of all digital wellness guides like Ayurveda, self-love, whole food eating, etc. So all you have to do is head over to my show notes. You'll see the link over there. It's a little bit.ly link. It'll take you right there. You'll be able to receive a sample class, check out the curriculum, get all your questions answered. And I'm so excited to have you on this mission, raising the vibration of the planet together as a health coach. Again, head over to my show notes. You'll see the link right there and I'll see you inside. Wherever you are in the world right now, just take a comfortable seat. This is going to be like a satsang. It's going to be like a drop in. So just take a comfortable seat because we're going to go in and I just want you to feel open. We have a lot of hostility in social media right now. This is the opposite. We're going to hold the opposite pole right now of just being in complete openness, receptivity, listening, alignment. So get yourself some green juice, sit down, (laughs) and we are going to drop in. So I just invite you wherever you are right now, just to put your phone up against something, put it up against your bookshelf or your computer or whatever it is, and just close your eyes right now and tune into your breath. Notice how you're feeling, how you're breathing, what thoughts and emotions are coming up. And we're gonna take three deep breaths together to just come into synchronicity. Let's take a deep breath in. Hold inside out. Now an even deeper breath in, bringing it in from the belly. Inside out. (sighs) Deepest breath in. Clench everything. Clench your shoulders, your hands, your face. Clench, clench, clench. Inside out. (sighs) Drop everything. Let your body sway and circle. And just come into a place of openness, imagining a beautiful white lotus in your heart chakra and imagining that lotus just fully blossom and open as you feel the universal love energy that is available for us in this time when our love and our unity is more needed now than ever before. Feel the petals just opening and opening as your lotus expands. And you share your heart, your universal love with the world. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. A hand on your heart, a hand on your womb and belly. Just tune in. And just ask yourself this question right now. How am I being called to be of service? How am I being called to be of service? How 
How am I being called to be of service? How am I being called to be of service? And let yourself receive any answers or just sit with the question and let the answers reveal themselves in synchronicities throughout your days and weeks. Allowing ourselves to sit in this void right now, this void within ourselves and this void within humanity. As we are in an in-between space right now, the merging of two consciousnesses, the merging of two worlds, the merging of two selves. And let yourself really just be here in this in-between. Maybe noticing yourself wanting to take action, but knowing from a higher perspective that action must only be taken from a place of alignment. And when you feel ready, gently wiggle your fingers and your toes and open your eyes and come back to your breath to this moment. So let's talk about this. So we are in a time right now that we are being called to be activists. For some of us, this activism work is very new. And for others, it has been a part of our lives for a long time. Regardless, right now we are all needed, but we are all needed in different ways. Because we spend so much time on social media, we are shown many different ways that people approach situations. We're shown many situations and approaches to those situations. And then even within that person, according to how they feel at that moment, there is going to be a different approach. The way that you react with your partner when you're having a fight in the midst of a fight is going to be very different than how you react to your partner when you've taken a couple hours off and tuned in and meditated. It's the same situation, but the way that we are approaching it is going to be different according to how we feel. Right now, for a lot of people, this is their first time opening their eyes to what is happening under the surface on so many different levels. So because of this, it almost feels like we're free falling. And we look around us and try to hold on to anything that we can see. Should I be reacting in this way? This person says I should do this. This person says I should be like that. They're doing it this way. So as we're falling, we're trying to hold on to the ways that we see other people doing it without realizing that every single person's fall is going to be different and every single person's reaches are going to be different. So not all of us are meant to serve in the same way, and not all of us are meant to even serve the same causes. We have universal causes like human rights, but each of us, based off of our family, our upbringing, our karma, is going to be essentially soul assigned to different places. And what is most important is for you to know why you're taking action on something. Activism in a way is easy. You, you just keep acting, you keep, you keep raising awareness, you keep signing the petitions, having the difficult conversations. In a way that's easy because we know what to do, but doing the work, that's what is hard. Doing the work so we can be in a place of alignment and be in complete integrity with how we're showing up, that takes spiritual discipline. So, so many of us, 
we want to we want to do the right thing. I think all of us do. But what one person tells you is the right thing is not going to necessarily be your right thing. I may be a lawyer, so I'm saying, why aren't you changing the laws? Why aren't you talking about the laws? Laws, laws, laws. Because that's my, that's my worldview. Someone else may be in the educational system. Someone else may be in the meditation world. Someone else may be here. So we're all speaking on our own, you know, our own podium saying the world should be like this and people should be like that. But it takes our, our intuition to know what is for me. Not everyone's cause is going to be your cause and not everyone's way of showing up for their cause is going to be theirs. What I'm seeing right now is a lot of us haven't truly tapped in and asked how we can be of service. What gifts were we born with that are meant to be shared at this time? What are the lessons that only we truly know based off of our own upbringing. So for example, maybe you grew up in a family of addicts and that has been a generational issue that is happening. So you've seen firsthand what it's like to struggle from addiction. You've seen the ups and the downs. You've loved deeply people who dealt with addiction. So you have that inside perspective that most people do not on what addiction means for the world and how we can go about solving it from a true root cause level. And that is much more than reposting things on social media. As you know, it comes from speaking to the void. And someone else may have dealt with poverty and someone else immigration and someone else environmental issues. And there are so many things that each and every one of us has been confronted with. And that is not coincidental. In the Vedas, we say that this world is a school. You're born into this earth school and you go through a curriculum of what your soul needs. So your curriculum may have been to see dysfunctions in relationships so you can understand that from a core level and help heal them. Your curriculum could have been to see not being able to share your voice and having to learn how to trust your throat chakra and speak your truth. Your soul curriculum could have been so many different things, how to deal with infidelity, how to overcome war, so many things that each of us have dealt with. So instead of looking outside, it's time for us to really, if we actually are here to raise the vibration of the planet, to listen to what are the obstacles that I uniquely have overcome and how can I use the medicine that I have gained from that process to be of service. So there are different ways that we're gonna be of service and I like to break them down in the three doshas, the three Ayurvedic archetypes. As you know, or may not know, I am an Ayurvedic author. I have written the book, Idiot's Guide to Ayurveda, Eat, Feel Fresh, and a Yogic Path, Oracle Card Deck, all about the Vedas with forwards by Deepak Chopra. And it is such an important thing for me to share with people because the doshas help you see how you can actually be of service because otherwise we're all gonna be doing the same thing and that's not what the world really needs. So the Vata way to be of service. So Vata is air energy. So if you are a very Vata person, the way that you get to be of service right now is to use your creativity. The ideas that are channeling through you What are the ways that you can use them to an important cause that matters to you? So maybe you're making really beautiful graphics and these graphics are sharing with you how you can raise awareness on racism or environmental issues or whatever else it is. Maybe you can come up with interesting campaigns. Maybe you can have discussions that people can speak about on these causes. Maybe you can look at it from a higher perspective. Everyone is so in in the issue. Maybe what your solution is, is to kind of get out of the problem and get out of the, the stickiness of the fighting and to see this from the bird's eye perspective. So that is what vatas do. Vatas are able to essentially be the birds who are flying from that higher perspective and channeling new visions. So if you are someone who's a creative, maybe you have an artistic side to you that you have not yet expressed, how can I use this to be of service? Mm, I know this episode is good, but so is this sponsor. 
A lot of us don't feel comfortable going to supermarkets right now, and cafes are closed, which means we aren't picking up green juices or even buying fresh produce as often. But right now, it is more important than ever before to keep our immune systems high, especially with greens and superfoods. I've been drinking Organifi Green every single day, and it's been a goddess send. It contains immune boosting ingredients like moringa, chlorella, spirulina, wheatgrass, ashwagandha, turmeric, lemon, mint, and so much more. It takes only one minute to add into my water, and I feel so good knowing that at least I got my greens in for that day which frankly I may not have had otherwise. I've also sent it to my family members to keep them healthy at this time too. You can receive 20% off your Organifi at Organifi.com using coupon code Sahara. Again, that's Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com using coupon code Sahara and that link is in the show notes. Those who are more Pitta, Pitta is the fire energy. So how can you use your gifts of being able to get stuff done, being able to direct people, being able to actually create those ideas and bring them to the world? So what a pitch is really good at is, okay, let's actually have this event. Let's actually bring this to the world. Let's, let's put this on the calendar. Let's set up a schedule. Let's set up the systems. They're very practical in that way and they love to achieve goals, set goals. They're very strategic thinkers and that actually is part of their dharma, their soul's purpose here on the planet. So how can I use that fiery energy that I may be channeling as anger right now and actually use that constructively to use that fire to bring me through a series of steps to bring about long-term change? Because right now, while anger is sacred, we're also burning ourselves with it. I want to share with you the story of the Egyptian goddess Sekhmet. So Egyptian goddess Sekhmet is the lioness goddess. She has a lioness head and a female's body. And in her story, her father, Ra, who's the son, brought her to the world because there were a lot of people who were practicing injustice, lots of social injustices, even back in the Egyptian times. So she came forth on the earth and she started to slash and slay the people who were committing these acts of injustice. But what ended up happening was because she was so fueled by her anger that eventually she actually became bloodthirsty. She became just shattering everyone that she saw, good, bad, because that anger began to take hold of her. So what this story tells us is that your anger can be used as a powerful tool, but if we're not channeling it in the correct way, if we're not actually using our anger towards change, then what happens is we become victims of our anger. We aren't actually able to create change. We just are angry for the sake of being angry, and then we add up fuel to the fire. Her name is Sekhmet. You can find her on my Instagram. I am Sahara Rose. I have a picture of her up. So how can we use our anger, our rage with what's happening in the world and channel it in this way that we're actually able to create a long-term change, not acting out of our egoic desire. Sometimes the ego says, I'm helping, I'm helping, but actually you're, you're hurting. And that's a really tough pill for a lot of us to swallow because we do all want to do the right thing. But sometimes by having intense debates with people and being in this fighting mode, we're not, not only are we not getting through to the other person, but we're also hurting ourselves. Have you ever changed your mind on a subject because someone yelled at you enough that at a particular point of them yelling at you, you, you realize that they were right? No, that's never happened because the way that our nervous systems respond is that when someone is yelling at us, when someone is, is coming at us in a way that feels really destructive, we're going to put our defenses on. We're going to have our our crystals and our armor, and we're not going to listen to anything that they have to say. We're actually going to turn them into more of the person that we dislike. So it is so important for us to only have conversations with people who are open to hearing it. And I know how much it sucks when your own family members may not be willing to hear it. 
You know, I did a post on my Instagram. My Instagram is at I am Sahara Rose. You can find it right here in the comment about how to confront and deal with racist family members. And the thing is, if they're not willing to have a conversation in here, there's actually nothing that you can do. So what we're realizing a lot is where can my anger be channeled into change and art? And where is it just burning me? The fire is actually turning around and burning down my own home. So that is the Egyptian goddess Sekhmet. Definitely take a look at her story. I have that on my Instagram. And so the Pitta way to be of service is to channel that energy into change. And then the Kapha way to be of service is to allow yourself to really feel what Kaphas are so great at. Kapha is the earth energy. They are able to really get a pulse on how people are feeling on an emotional level. They're tuned into the heart chakras of the world. So the beauty of this is you can have really authentic conversations. You can put out really significant and poignant messages on how people are really feeling because you can sense it. You're not, you're not falling for the surface level stuff. You can see what's underneath that. You can see the anger, the sadness, the fear, the frustration that's underneath that. However, the shadow aspect of the kapha, by the way, you can If you just go on my Instagram, I have, I just posted three graphics on all three doshas, vata, pizza, and kapha. So definitely go on my Instagram, IamSaharaRose.com. I have a quiz on my website, IamSaharaRose.com. It breaks down the doshas, the mind and the body into percentages of each one, emails you a free cheat sheet, all of that. And of course I've written books on it. So be sure to check that out, but you can also just feel what, what doshas you resonate with. So that kapha is that empath, right? They are that person that maybe also has a hard time dealing with all of the sadness in the world. And I think all of us, sometimes we're like, holy crap, I can't believe we're in this situation. But we're in this situation because it's bringing us to higher truth. So it's important as someone who is an empath, as someone who really is feeling the pain and the suffering of the world, it is so significant for you to take time off. Your highest form of activism may actually to be getting off social media for a period of time. Because kaphas are actually meant to serve in this like deep emotional way. And if you're so caught up in the pain and the sadness, you're not going to be able to get to the state to share your gifts. So how many of you guys feel so overwhelmed with what's happening in the world that you don't even know how to share the things that you love? You don't even know how to share your love for meditation and healing and breath work and all of the things because every time you open up social media, you just see all of this outpouring of anger and sadness that it makes you feel like you just can't handle it all. So as a kapha, it is so important for you to just really tune into how you're meant to be of service because right now, social media in a way has become TV. A lot of us don't watch TV, but we're watching, we're on social media all the time. And it's basically like having thousands of television channels on as you scroll. So maybe your, your highest activism is to take a week off social media to meditate every single day on that question we asked at the beginning, how can I be of service right now? And how can I be of service through joy? Because the thing is service, being of service is not necessarily a service job. It doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice. It doesn't mean that you can't feel happy. It doesn't mean that you're not able to essentially live a life that you love. I think a lot of us, and I, someone said, I think a lot of us on Chopra's are kapas. I, I feel you. And I think a huge lesson that I've learned for myself is you can be of service to the world and still live a life that you love. So I want to give the example of, you know, when you have a friend that keeps coming to you for advice, what should I do about my, my ex? What should I do about my ex? What should I do? And you keep giving them the same advice, but they're not doing anything about it. It feels extremely draining because you're pouring energy into them. It's flowing into them, but it's not being received. It's essentially being blocked. So you're giving energy, but they're not receiving it. 
And eventually you're going to end up feeling drained. And then you're every time they text you, you're like, oh, why are they texting me? And then it becomes this frustrating thing that you're holding on to. And the reason why is because the energy is not flowing. It is going to them and it's getting stuck. It's going to them and it's getting stuck. So you're not receiving that flow and that feedback. Whereas, you know, when you help a friend and they really take what you had to say to heart and you see them make this shift and it feels so gratifying and you feel so grateful for that experience and you actually love helping this person because you can see every single time you help them, it really helps create a shift in their lives. That feels like a river. It is flowing. It is not stagnant energy. That energy from you is moving towards them. And then from them, it's moving towards someone else. And then they're able to show up for someone in a, in a bigger way. And then that person's able to show up for someone in a bigger way. And then that person, and then that person. So it creates this ripple, this energy flow, like a river rather than a dam that's like getting stuck somewhere. So this is why it's so important for all of us to really look at where can my energy go that it will be of the highest service to all. And you tapping into how it makes you feel joyful actually brings you further alignment. A lot of us have guilt about joy. A lot of us think, well, if it feels good for me, then it must not be good for others. Because that is joy through ego. That is not true joy. Joy through ego is taking. Joy without ego, joy through the heart is being in this flow of giving and receiving. So some of us have, I don't think any of you guys, but the mainstream world says to be happy is to have money, is to have accolades, fame, whatever it is, right? But we know that that's not actual true happiness and that's not true joy. Imagine if source designed you in a way that your highest point of joy is your highest point of service. When that guitarist is in their highest point of joy of just riffing it on the guitar, they're also of their highest service because of the beauty and the energy that it cultivates in every single person who's able to hear the strumming of his chords. Someone who's up there like Deepak Chopra giving his speech He's in his highest state of joy, sharing his gifts with the world. And he's also in his highest service because we're all receiving it. A gardener, when they're spending hours weeding things and bringing the beautiful produce to the world, is in their highest joy and their highest service. The world is not meant to feel difficult. You don't have to sacrifice. I can either help the world or help myself. That's an illusion. That is Maya. The greatest way that you were designed, those things that you truly love to do. I really want you to ask yourself, what do I truly love to do? And your first ego's answer is maybe, I like to do, I like to do nothing. I, I like to just hang out on the beach. Okay, why? Why, why do you like to do nothing? Do you like to feel the void in that nothingness? Is it, is it the simplicity of it? How can you bring that into the world? If you love to hang out on the beach, why? Do you love to feel the warm sun on your skin? Do you love to see the sea animals? Why do you love that? Really asking yourself, why do, you, why do I love the things that I love? Because from there, you can find the red thread of how it is related to your dharma, your soul's purpose. So we were each designed in this way to love the things that make us, that make us our highest activists. The era of the angry activist or the wounded healer is done. You don't have to be angry to get your point across. And you don't have to sacrifice your own well-being to help others. You don't have to be a wishful thinker and an idealist and out of touch with reality. What if the reason that you were given those ideas is because it is what you are meant to share with this planet? So look at the things that bring you the highest joy. What is underneath them all? What archetype, what dosha is it related to? Is it the vata? Is it the creativity, the freedom, the flow of it? That's how you're meant to be of service. Is it the pitta, the fire, the ambition that you feel when you're doing it? The way that you're able to make a true difference in the world? Then follow that. You're meant to create things and usher them to life.
Or is it the kapha, the way that you can really feel it connect to people's hearts and change the world soul to soul? Then that is why you're here. So it is so important for us to have clarity before we take action. We live in a world that validates taking action, but most of us spend years taking action on things that if we had spent seconds really sitting on, we would not have done. How many of us have lived lives and learned lessons that may have taken 20 years when if we truly asked ourselves at the beginning, does this bring me joy? And does this bring me of highest service? We would have known instantly. So really use this time right now. Energetically, we are all in the void, even in astrology and Vedic astrology, which is what I practice. We're in this time of between the inhale and the exhale. So this is the time for you to cultivate, to go deeper, to ask yourself those big questions, to learn, to self-study. Because the more you know about yourself, the more in alignment each and every step can be. This is why these tools and practices, it's not so you can move to the Himalayas and have no, no touch with the rest of the world. It's so you can really be in the world without being of the world. Because when we're so entrenched with the doings and the happenings of society, then we can't ask ourselves how we're meant to contribute to that society. I can't untie a knot by being in the knot. I have to zoom out and look at it. And only from there can I see things more clearly. And then I realize the patterns. And then I realize how can I actually be the most effective in creating this change? Not just trying and failing and getting stressed out and throwing it away, but to actually go in there piece by piece looking at it for what it is. What is underneath this? Is this a call for love? Is this a call for recognition? Is this a call for respect? That is what people want, but people don't know how to say it. People want to feel a greater part of something. They want to feel loved, cherished, acknowledged, but when they don't have it, it's like when an angry child doesn't get what they want and they're throwing things and they're yelling and they're shouting, but they don't have the vocabulary for my basic needs are not being met right now. So it takes us as conscious beings to cultivate that awareness within ourselves. The more we cultivate that awareness within ourselves, the more that we can cultivate that awareness in others and see the world for how it truly is. Lift up the veil so we're not just in the Maya, the illusion of the world, but truly seeing what is underneath it all. So every single day when you're meditating, ask, how can I be of service? And how can I be of service through joy? So thank you all so much for sitting with me today in the satsang. My name is Sahara Rose. My Instagram is I'm Sahara Rose. My website is the same thing, I'm Rose.com. I have a dosha quiz right there that I break them down in percentages. And what I really love to speak about is how it's related to your dharma. My book is coming out in January. My next one, Discover Your Dharma. So I actually take this process of the doshas and how you can find your dharma, your soul's purpose, move it through the chakras, taking all of these Vedic concepts, but really bringing them into how you can be of service in this lifetime right now. So be sure to follow me. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for saying yes to the cause. Thank you for saying yes to incarnating at this time when our souls are needed more than ever. It is not an easy lifetime to incarnate, but the reason why we are here is because we are the lights who are here to elevate the vibration of the planet and to bring the new consciousness into this field. So thank you for saying yes. So grateful for you all. Atma namaste. Mm, I hope this episode resonated with you. I hope it allowed you to see activism in a new light and how the doshas are interconnected with being of service, with your dharma, with your soul's purpose and all things in life. That's what I love teaching about how the doshas are just this beautiful lens to see the world through. So you can 
pre-order my book now, Discover Your Dharma. It's available at any bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, any indie bookstore, wherever you purchase your books, you can pre-order Discover Your Dharma and my new a Yogic Path journal as well. There are limited supplies of those, so be sure to pre-order it as well as it's available at any major bookstore. And I'm super excited for you to dive in. As well as in this month's Goddess Circle, we are working with Goddess Isis, all about alchemy, all about embodiment, working with magic, how to transmute the negative energies of the world and turn them into light. So that is also available for you in the show notes, rosegoldgoddesses.com. And I'm so excited to have you inside. If you loved this episode, I would love to send you a free gift, which is the first half of my unreleased book, Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type. This is a different book than Eat Feel Fresh, my first book ever, which is not released anywhere. And I am gifting it exclusively to those who leave a review of my podcast podcast in the iTunes store. So all you got to do is head over to iTunes where you may be listening to this podcast and leave a review, take a screenshot that you've left it and email it over to me at sahara at eatfeelfresh.com. Again, that's sahara, S-A-H-A-R-A at eat feelfresh.com. And I will send you back the first half of my unreleased book, Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type, which goes all into Ayurveda, doshas, plant-based nutrition, body types, all of the things in a really fun and engaging way. So this is my gift to you for free for supporting the podcast. Every single review I personally read, it really helps the podcast be listened to by more people so we can raise the vibration of the planet together. And I am so grateful to have you on this journey. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the next episode. Namaste. Namaste.